This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God wants us to not be in a place of stress and frustration and um, defeat and addictions and bondages and um, strife and all of these things. And so it happens when we recognize that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood and not believing the lies of the enemy. Are you ready to step into your power? Are you a radical woman who knows her worth and is ready to revolutionize the world with your authentic, unstoppable self? Join us for Taffy Dollar's 2025 Radical Women's Conference, March 20th through the 21st. This is your moment to rise, to claim your place, to be seen, heard, and valued for the incredible woman you are. Register today and let's change the world. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love. Let's turn in our Bibles tonight. I want to look at something that I believe will be a blessing to your life. Uh, we're going to start in the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to jump around a little bit and talk about some things concerning the enemy. Going to shine the light, not so much wanting to give him attention per se, but just kind of shine some light on things that the Bible says, and so we can begin to live a life that is Victorious, a life that destroys the enemy, that defeats him in our everyday walk, in our everyday life, and we can begin to keep him under our feet where he belongs. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, we're going to start tonight in, uh, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 12. We're going to talk about the wrong enemy and the right enemy. Spend a little minute here just talking about... Um, the enemy as it relates to the things that we want to share with you tonight. So it says um, here in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so I want us to zero in and just highlight, if you have a device to be able to highlight with, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because I think it's so important and so indicative of the time in which we live to understand who we are wrestling against. Because the enemy doesn't want us to recognize and to be aware of the fact that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but he says we wrestle against principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And so it's vital for us to recognize that it is the enemy who wants us to think things that are not true. He wants us to believe the lies, just like he did in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, and when he came to Adam and came to Eve and started to commune with them and to talk with them. And the Bible says in a very subtle way, uh, in a crafty way to cause them to be distracted and to get into a place where they would not recognize that it was any of me that was talking. And so I want us to realize this scripture, let's look at it in the Amplified, uh, this same verse in the Amplified translation, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents. Because that's one thing I think that we forget is that it's easy for us to see people in the natural as those who we fight against, as our enemy, who we are wrestling against. But it's not flesh and blood, 
It's not uh, your boss. It's not your neighbor. It's the enemy that we are wrestling against and principalities powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. So first and foremost, we're going to probably keep it pretty simple tonight. And if you're looking for the Greek and the Hebrew and, you know, some other stuff, you might want to come back on Sunday, but we're just going <laughs> to just get into a place where day to day we can walk in victory and deal with the enemy and keep him under our feet and not allow his plans to cause us to be tripped up and to uh, be defeated in our life. So uh, we are not in a wrestling match with the enemy. Uh, I mean, with people. We are wrestling against these powers that um, the enemy has caused to be released as a result of him coming in the Garden of Eden. I won't get into all of that. But let's look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 14, I think this will help us too as it relates to recognizing the enemy. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Let's back up a little bit here. And um, we're shining the light tonight. Glory be to God. It says, uh, in fact, we can go back a little bit more. Let's back up to verse 9. Let me see where that takes us in terms of a good starting point here. Okay, go to verse 10. And I got y'all jumping around, but... Okay. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes, forgave I forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not what? We are not unaware. We are not unknowing. We are not misunderstood concerning his devices. So he says, recognize the fact that there is an enemy because if we don't recognize him, he can take advantage of us. And particularly if we are ignorant or unaware of his schemes, his plans, and his devices. And so what he does is with us not being able to recognize that our fight isn't against our coworker or our family member, we can be unaware, and we could be taken advantage of. But when we realize that our uh, fight, which Jesus already won and, and already defeated the enemy, it's us walking it out on a day-to-day -day basis, is to enforce the victory that Jesus already gave for us to receive. And so... He, in many instances, will take advantage of the ignorance in the church, the ignorance in our life, all the things where he can find a foothold. That's what a stronghold is. It's a place where the enemy can hide out and feel safe. It's a thought pattern. It may be passed down from generations to generations to think that, you know, it's okay to be in poverty. It's okay to think that the government should take care of you or to think that, you know, I'm not, I'm inferior and I can never be uh, what the scripture says. It's just these thoughts that the enemy in many instances wants us to take advantage of. And so as a result, he can have a dwelling place and develop a stronghold in our life. And so we're resisting those thoughts. We are resisting the enemy. And we're coming against him when we renew our minds and we understand who we are in Christ and what the word of God has said concerning us. Amen? Amen. So the one reason that we won't prosper is if we stop believing uh, that we are blessed. One reason that we 
fail to operate in victory in areas of our life is if we stop the blessing because we believe the lies of the enemy. And that's happened far and wide where the church as an institution has latched on to the lies of the enemy that um, the church should be uh, po in poverty and that uh, believers should, um, the more godly you are, the more in poverty you are. And just all these different things that, you know, women are inferior to men and women are not called and women should not be in the pulpit. And all these different things where the enemy has put these things out here and this race is inferior to the other race and this class of people is below this class of people. And so if we're not in the position to renew our mind, it will cause us to stay in a place of brokenness, to be defeated, um, to not experience God's best. Look at 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2, very popular scripture. Uh, one that we have taught for a very long period of time, just on the fact that we must allow our souls to prosper, our thought life to prosper. Because it's believed that on an average, we have 60,000 thoughts a day. And 85% of those thoughts are considered to be negative and repetitive. And so as a result of that, we have to renew and rewire and reprogram our mindset and change our thinking. Because primarily, sickness, illness comes from stress. And so if we're stressed out because of being so accustomed and conformed to the world's way of doing things, then we will fail to operate in the blessing that God wants for our life. And how I many you know God wants us to not be in a place of stress and frustration and um, defeat and addictions and bondages and um, strife and all of these things. And so it happens when we recognize that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood and not believing the lies of the enemy. You know, when I first married Creflo, I didn't know if we were going to stay together. I thought at some point I would get tired of him and he'd get tired of me. That's just because I said, well, you know, we'll just go for the ride and just see. But, you know, I was very ignorant, so ignorant in areas of my life. When we first got married, we just, you know, thought that we would just live um, doing our other jobs, and then the ministry would just be part-time, and we would just kind of try to figure it out from paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, we had rented all of this furniture, and we didn't, you know, he got some stuff off the side of the street. And, and so, you know, we were just trying to make it work as best as we could, you know, and until we start renewing our mind, and understood that, you mean to tell me God wants us to prosper and, and not live from, you know, paycheck and penny to penny and borrowing from Peter to pay Paul? And, and uh, you know, it was just so far in this scripture here that says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health. Because we were so accustomed to sickness and um, just being passed down from generation to generation, but it is God's best that we prosper and not believe the lies of the enemy that say, you know, you can't live in victory. You can't um, be successful uh, living the Christian life or um, even as a single person or as a married person or as a widow person. It is God's plan that above all things, above all things, that you prosper and not believe the lies of the enemy about being okay with being insufficient and having lack and uh, 
How many of you know you can't be a blessing if you haven't been blessed? And so he says how he's called us as a part of Abraham's seed because Abraham's seed is blessed. And once we understand that we are blessed and we can be a distribution, a channel, a funnel to be able to produce and distribute good in the lives of people. So it's when we renew our mind, when our soul prospers is when our life begins to prosper. Until our soul prospers, our life will not begin to change. And so um, we make up in our minds that we are not stranded by the world's way. We're not stranded by our genealogy or lineage. And uh, we looked at how Rahab and there were many who had a past, but you know what? God can cause that thing to be turned around and transformed and all of a sudden you see her and others included as the heroes of faith over in the book of Hebrews. And so God is not limited by um, the things that are in our past. If anything, we limit him by believing the lies of the enemy and by receiving his mistruths and the things that he wants us to believe. So the one reason that we don't prosper is if we stop the blessing by believing a lie. Amen? Amen. So you know the battle is raging, but the question is tonight, are we fighting the right enemy? Are you fighting flesh and blood, well, you know what they said, and I saw them, and I heard them, and they told me, that's not your enemy. Your enemy is the devil who hides and wants to outwit and outsmart you into thinking that that is your enemy. That person isn't your enemy. The enemy is the one that we read about here and just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that Satan, he is the one who is trying to take advantage. So the lies of the enemy have no power in our lives except for that which we give them. Amen? Amen. He is continually bombarding our minds with lies in an effort to try and take our eyes off of who God is. And that was what he did in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. He wanted to take their focus off of God and onto themselves. Has God said? Has God commanded you? And subtly and craftily, he bombarded their minds with lies in an effort to take their eyes off of God and who God says that they were. So it's important that we not only identify that we not identify with those lies, but that we replace them with the truth of God's Word. We replace them with the truth of God's Word. Because he had them to think that, you know, this one tree was the end of all and everything, regardless of all the other trees, but to make them think that God was holding out on them and that they were missing out because of this one tree that they were told uh, to focus their attention on. Has God said, and because God said, God knows that this will happen and this and that. And so he consistently has done that through centuries of time and comes in our minds in the very same way. Has this person said, Do you know that God has forgotten about you? Do you know that God doesn't love you? Don't you receive the fact that God is angry with you? Don't you know that nobody has ever done that? Haven't you realized that that promise of God is not going to work? And so it's his strategy that he wants, his scheme, his device, that he wants to take advantage of us with through our uh, lack of knowledge, our unawareness concerning him. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Chapter 12 of the book of Romans. Lies are costly 
as they steal life from all who embrace them. If I believe a lie, I empower the liar. The devil is the enemy of our souls. He wants to trip us up through lies, through intimidation, accusation, and seduction. His aim is to get us to question who God really is. And that's what we were just referencing in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Even in chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 15, I encourage you to look at that when you get home, because these are things that have not changed, and this is his scheme. And he is a thief. Klepto. You all know what a kleptomaniac is. They steal. They take things. They are robbers. So Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 2, is where we want to look at this. Um, I'll read it here in the King James. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I had to renew my mind about being a godly wife, to be a Christian wife, to be a Christian mom, to be a Christian uh, example, a Christian leader. And as a result, I had to get rid of all the things that were contrary to that. You know, uh, holding on to fear and holding on to pride and, um, you know, allowing the enemy to have this place where he could dwell in my mind, thinking that, you know, anytime my husband asks me to do something, he's trying to take advantage of you. <laughs> Don't you let him take advantage of you. That fear that was trying to maintain its stronghold in my life because of what I had seen and what I believed and what I fought, and those were all lies. And so as long as he can get us to believe the lie, we are empowering the liar. And when we don't recognize that it is not flesh and blood, it's not our spouse, it's not our kids, it's the enemy that wants you to believe the lies, that he is really the one behind saying all these things, and he wants you to catch it. He wants you to believe it. Amen. Yeah, I tell them a thing or two. Just, just bless them out. Just cuss them. Just punch them. Kick them. I mean, who do they think they are talking to you like that? I mean, you've got to... And the enemy subtly makes you think things that are not true. Because we're not wrestling. Our wrestling matches not with flesh and blood, but with spirits. Amen. Are you ready to bounce back from adversity and trouble? Because of the finished works of Jesus, all barriers blocking our full access to God have been removed. The cross gave equal footing to all, regardless of gender or nationality. In Taffy Dollar's five message series, Leveling the Playing Field, she offers tools to access the many promises God has made. Everything changed when Jesus died. Because at the foot of the cross, we all look the same. You have access, you have opportunity, and in Christ, you have a fair chance. I read the end of the book, Glory Be to God, and we win. With a love gift of 15 U.S. dollars or more, you can own a copy. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit www.creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Allow God to elevate you. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. I don't care what the doctor says. 
I don't care what the mortgage person says, have faith in God. If you can see the invisible, he can do the impossible. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. When you think about what could have happened to me, what should have happened to me, and now look at what's available to me, that's enough for me to tear something up right now all by itself. I got to give him the glory. He saved us. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips. No matter where you are, subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Creflo Dollar Ministries refuses to turn a blind eye to human suffering. God has given us the power and the means to meet the needs of people in a hands-on, tangible way. Rest assured that your financial donations are hard at work in the lives of people both here and abroad. We know that when people understand grace, they are empowered to change their lives for the better. Your support enables us to share the grace of God and are able to improve their lives. Thank you so much. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. God has given us a grace gift to help overcome the limitations of our understanding so that we can receive clear direction. Introducing Grace Life Academy. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access to hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. Features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. To get started on your 30-day free trial, simply text or sign up online by visiting mygracelifeacademy.com. Listen to me closely right now. God is not mad at you. He is not tallying up your sins, holding your sins against you. Jesus paid the price, he paid the debt, and he has made available to you grace and salvation through the precious blood that was shed on the cross. That's how much God wants to have a personal, intimate relationship with you. He wants you to be set free from anything that has you bound and then eternally you can be with him. So if you've not received Jesus as your Lord and as your personal savior, and you'd like to have a relationship with him, repeat this prayer after me right now. Heavenly Father, come into my life, save me. I believe Jesus died and shed his blood for my sin. Come into my heart right now. I believe I receive salvation and I'm seated at the right hand of God the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just that simple. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.